is a very resilient rock, but we live in a very delicate ecosystem. Greetings, humans, and welcome back. Ooh, baby, yeah! In the first video, I dove into the underlying why why I'm so interested in this topic. In this video, we'll discuss how the current system is massively wasteful of resources, poisoning the environment, leading to numerous vicious cycles, susceptible to weather and climate change, which are different by the way, and creates tasteless, nutrient deficient produce that actually serves more as a commodity than as actual food. I had originally planned to make the second video in the series about the human health impacts of our current agriculture industry. In reality, it's impossible to decouple the human health effects from the environmental impacts. So we're gonna talk about the environment first. So buckle your seatbelts. Future videos will talk about the benefits to the community and to mental health that can come from a more distributed food system, as well as the increases in geopolitical stability that we might be able to achieve and for technologies like the blockchain to make a big impact. So now would be a great time to hit subscribe. First off, let's talk about resources. Agriculture in the United States alone takes up 922 million hectares, 3.6 million square miles. Currently, nearly 70% of all water use on the planet goes to agriculture. Industrial farming techniques have been responsible for a loss of approximately 30% of all the arable land on the planet in the last 40 years alone. Monocrop soil is more susceptible to erosion and drought it also loses a lot of nutrients and therefore it requires more fertilizer the next time around to achieve a comparable yield. Currently, agriculture uses about 15 to 20% of all fossil fuel energy. From natural gas fertilizer, oil-based chemicals, farm vehicles and equipment, distribution, packaging, and refrigeration. Now, most estimates suggest that our current system requires 10 calories of energy to produce one calorie of energy that we actually eat. Because after all, a calorie is just a measurement of energy. What we're witnessing now with the advent of Agriculture 3.0 should give us hope that we can do a lot more with a lot less. On average, indoor farms and greenhouses use 70% less water than traditionally farmed produce. With outfits like Aero Farms and Gotham Greens boasting that they use 100 times less land and 95% less water, than the traditional system. It poisons the environment. Outdoor farms are much more vulnerable to contamination from animal wastes, irrigation runoff, or tainted groundwater. Industrial agriculture requires an incredible amount of fertilizers. Synthetic nitrogen fertilizers in the soil produce nitrous oxide, which is a greenhouse gas that's about 300 times more powerful than carbon dioxide at trapping heat in the atmosphere. Dead zone just sounds like the area behind Mitch McConnell's eyes. But not only do dead zones kill off fish and other aquatic wildlife, which thereby reduces the actual food supply, but dead zones absolutely wipe out incredibly important phytoplankton. Phytoplankton in the oceans is responsible for up to 70% of the oxygen that is on this planet. Earth is a very resilient rock but we live in a very delicate ecosystem. A reduction in planetary oxygen of only one or 2% would be catastrophic. A lot of other systems like aeroponics or hydroponics actually don't rely on soil at all. They just provide a specific level of nutrients and water to the root system without using soil. A lot of the pesticides that are used for industrial agriculture are some of the most insidious chemicals known to man. Many of them fall under what are called persistent organic pollutants. Persistent organic pollutants, as the name suggests, they persist in the environment and then as a result in wildlife and in our bodies. And the fact is that they accumulate up the food chain. And since humans tend to eat toward the top of the food chain, we are absolutely inundating ourselves with these toxic chemicals that have a laundry list of side effects that would make you sick. Pun intended. Our water resources belong to everyone. The fact is, there's really no such thing as South Africa's water, or Brazil's water, or Estonia's water, or New York's water. They're pretty much all connected. Now the use of pesticides not only poisons our water, 
but it also destroys insect populations. Incredibly important insects, such as bees, for example, who, if you forgot, are implicated in almost all of the fruits and vegetables that we consume on a daily basis. Do you like coffee? Bees. Do you like chocolate? Bees. Do you like apples? Bees. Do you like strawberries? Bees. 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 We are going to kill off the goose that laid the golden egg here. The crazy part is, despite the fact that there have been all these pesticides introduced in the last 40 or 50 years, one third of all crops are still lost to pests, which is the same level as before the invention of these pesticides. In 2016, the US applied 1.2 billion pounds of pesticides to our crops, 322 million pounds of which are things that are banned in the EU. 40 million pounds of which are banned in China, China, and 26 million pounds of which are banned in Brazil. In controlled environment agriculture, there is no need for artificial fertilizers, and the use of pesticides is little to zero. It's pretty much all organic. We're talking local, organic, vegan, paleo, gluten-free, sugar-free, cage-free, grass-fed, all-natural, antioxidant-rich, artisanal superfood. It leads to a vicious cycle of resistance. Monocropped soil loses its nutrients and is extra susceptible to erosion, which then tends to require that it needs more artificial synthetic fertilizer the next time around. Additionally, monocropped fields are much more susceptible to drought. Weeds, insects, and fungus tend to develop resistance in about five years, which has caused the chemicals to grow increasingly lethal over the past 60 years. It takes on average 8 to 10 years to identify, test, and develop a new pesticide, though that isn't long enough to discover the long-term toxicity to humans and other organisms. When I'm using the term controlled environment agriculture, it means a lot of different things. There are hydroponics, aquaponics, aeroponics, there are in-home personal units, there are greenhouses, we're talking container farms, we're talking plant factories. Pretty much regardless of the approach, the objective is to be able to control for a number of variables. These are variables like the temperature, the humidity, the pH, the nutrient content, lighting, carbon dioxide levels, and pests. You can control the entire process from seed to store. Food is not matriculated through large distribution and fulfillment centers that can often lead to additional exposure to contaminants. Meta-analysis by the Center for Excellent in Fruit and Vegetable Quality of the University of California, Davis, showed that fresh produce loses 45% of its nutritional value when shipped due to the preservatives that are used, the heat, the light, the canning process, the packaging process, and the refrigeration, and so on. And while it's hard to quantify, at least anecdotally, locally grown organic food tends to taste better. These overly industrialized crops are really not treated as food they're treated primarily as commodities. This is not meant to throw the entire system under the bus. In fact, it was a necessary part of getting humanity to the point that we're at now. Society itself wouldn't exist without agriculture in some form. And the advances that were made when we moved to a more industrialized system and started to use these artificial fertilizers, they actually did create increases in yields. More available cheap food means higher standards of living and higher populations, and those are mostly good things. So the point is not to try to replace every single farmer on the planet right now. The point is to put as much weight behind these new systems as we possibly can, as soon as we can, so that we can actually make the transition easy and efficient. Who could have known that in the future, we would farm our electricity out in the fields and we would build our food in the factories? All right guys, thank you very much for watching. I've been really excited to dive into all this stuff and to share it with you. The next video is gonna be about the human health impacts. Strap in. So in case you're new here, the way this works is I crank the content and you, you smash the like button. That's right, pump the algorithm, pray to the algorithm, worship the algorithm. The algorithms are our lords now. Please leave a comment. Honestly, I am welcoming all criticism and all feedback right now. Limited time offer. Once I'm famous, you won't be able to say anything to me anymore. And we'll see you in the next video. Oh, bees.